by these magnificent animals, the Bernese dogs. Hello? I think we're going wrong with the mic here. In their native Switzerland, they were general purpose farm dogs, but were widely used for draft work in the mountains. Now many Bernese owners in this country have endeavoured to keep this karting skill alive in the breed. So for the next few minutes, we'd like to provide you with a brief display of canine draft work and tell you something about these lovely dogs. Gentlemen, the Midland Bernese Carters. Now then, picture the scene if you will. It's early summer, the snows have melted on the mountains, and it's time to move the herds of dairy cattle away from the lowland winter grazing to the fresh green grass of the high alpine pastures. Now, as part of his farm duties, the Bernese is used to drive the cattle up the mountain where they'll stay for the duration of summer, and as autumn approaches, we'll drive them back down again to the shelter of the farms in the valleys. Now while the farmer is up on the high pastures however, he's got a bit of a problem because he still needs to transport all his milk and his other dairy produce all the way back down the mountain to the dairies, creameries and markets in the valleys. Now how's he going to do this? He's not going to roll the churn down, it will end up as cheese. And he's not going to carry it himself and he hasn't got a horse and cart. So the obvious solution of course is to harness up the dog into a small cart, place the milk churn in the cart and one of the small children is sent to accompany the dog down the mountain to the dairy. Now the child is not there to control the dog because generally speaking the dogs knew exactly what they were doing. 
and the child will be there to take the money for the milk, buy any provisions that were needed, load them in the cart and accompany the dog back up the mountain. The child is also there of course in case something goes wrong on the way, for example what happens if halfway up the mountain a wheel comes off the cart? Well Bernies are pretty clever dogs but they're not much good at putting wheels back on by themselves especially when they're harnessed up at the time. So the child would mend the cart or if they couldn't they'd leave the dog guarding the cart while they went to the nearest farm for assistance. Now you think that couldn't happen? Well it's actually happened to us twice. And last week it actually happened to Paul Debbie here. And the wheel came off the cart halfway through the display but a quick paper clip solved the problem. So that was easy enough. Now then we'll do a quick couple of demonstrations for you. So let's imagine for a moment that you've left your dog and cart waiting patiently at the end of a long line of market stalls while you browse the stalls waiting for a tasty treat to take back up the mountain for supper. Now when you get to the end of the line of stalls you've bought far more than you intended as so often happens when you go shopping. You've got some very heavy bags. What you really need is your dog to bring his cart to you for loading rather like a sort of self-propelled supermarket trolley. I'm sure you've all seen the obedience exercise where dogs do a recall, but you don't often see it done with a dog in a cart. But two of our carters are going to demonstrate it here for you. In front of me here is Debbie with on my right Clemmy, and behind me here, Wendy with Neva. They have to hope the dog stops at the end. We're going to get a bow from Neva there. No, perhaps not. No, okay. You have to hope the dog stops because there's no brakes on the cart and if they didn't the owner would be lying flat on the ground with paw prints and tire marks all over them. Now Debbie's being very clever here because she's actually reversing the cart back into position which was <laughs> not quite, but there we go. Imagine, if you will then, you picked up your dog and cart, you walked along another long line of market stalls and as you get towards the end you suddenly realise the stalls are getting closer and closer together. And when you get to the end, oh dear, it's a cul-de-sac and there's no room to turn your dog and cart round. So what are you going to do? Well the obvious solution is to try and reverse your dog and cart, as Debbie just did and as Wendy's now doing with Neva. And we've also discovered that she will actually respond a bit to the hand signals, a bit to turn left and right as well. The snag with all these carts though is that the wheels tend to jackknife underneath if the dog doesn't go back absolutely straight. So when we do this in competition, because there are a number of draft work competitions throughout the year with obstacle courses for the dogs and carts, uh, we put a locking device in to prevent the wheels from jackknifing as you go back. Our friend is going to try again, are we? There we go. There we go, no pushing and shoving. There she goes. Okay, there we go. Now then, karting on the public highway with dogs was banned in this country in about 1904 under a Cruelty to Dogs Act, basically because of the way that the Edwardians and Victorians treated their animals. They treated them very much as cheap commodities, especially when compared to the cost of a horse. And they fed the dogs on very little and when the dog finally dropped dead in the shafts they just replaced him with another one. So as a result, karting was banned on the public highway but still permitted on private property. They put a, an end to the commercial exploitation of dogs but it still enabled people like us who've come to this latterly uh, to do it on loyalty, alertness and understanding. We hope you enjoyed the display and could you show your appreciation for those lovely dogs and their owners, the Midland Bernies. Thank you. Uh, give them a round of applause and I should say that the um, tanks broke down and the uh, lady very kindly and very quickly replaced the tanks without any notice whatsoever. So thank you to them, that was really kind of them. Uh, now we're coming to the best part of the day, uh, the part where me and Big Andy get to be stupid. Um, so, um,